Hi moms and dads, a very warm welcome to another episode of Today's Parent where we endeavor to connect with experts and also share with you stories that are going to inspire you. I'm your host, Christine Casina. Have you ever heard of sickle cell? I know a lot of you have heard of sickle cell and know a family member or a friend who's afflicted. In today's episode, we are going to talk about matters uh, sickle cell and we have Eunice Owino, a lady passionate about matters sickle cell. She wants to share her story with you and pointers if you're watching and you're affected and how you can help a family member as well. Eunice, what a pleasure to have you on today's show. Thank you for having me. Sickle cell. Just tell us from the beginning, what is sickle cell? Sickle cell is a blood disorder where you inherit uh, the gene from your parents. Actually, sickle cell came about because of malaria. And uh, when you find out yourself, you don't get malaria as often as, as, um, <coughs> as any other person. Mm -hmm. Then you need to go and take a, a genotype test, which we call it genetic testing, which is done in... Um, major hospitals okay where now you'll find out if your genotype is as or aa if you're an as then you get married to an as mm -hmm. then that means you'll get a child with sickle cell it's the math of probability wow yeah so let, let me get it let me get it correct from my little from my little research number one sickle cell is an inherited disease yes it's not something that you acquire no you have possibly the genetic coding for it yes and then you've mentioned something about malaria, which I've never heard before, because if I don't get malaria often, and for most of us, we hardly go to hospital unless we are unwell. Yeah. So you are saying if you are the kind of person who hardly gets malaria, yes. you need to ask yourself why, mm -hmm. and possibly go to hospital and tell them. You need a genotype test. Wow. Yeah. So that you can protect the future, because I think that is one of, uh, one of the ways we can cut sickle cell from spreading all okay. over yeah okay. okay and when we say sickle cell what does it mean when the cell is sickle when the cell is sickle it simply means uh, it becomes like half moon it's crescent or half donut meaning that it can't carry enough oxygen to pass through your blood capillaries and veins so they end up clogging at your joints every single joint wow, so when okay. they clog during that time is what we call a painful episode of crisis where there's this pain that is as much painful than labor if you're a woman you understand if you're a man it's hard to understand <laughs> like when they it's, have flu yes <laughs> And they think they are dying. <laughs> yes. They are not. So it's, it's a pain that you feel everywhere because that time blood is not flowing in your body. Oxygen is not flowing in your body. And that is the time you need to be rushed to hospital and be treated as an emergency case. Okay. Yes. Let's go back to your story. When did you discover that you have sickle cell? I thank God for my parents. Uh, I was tested for sickle cell at the age of eight months. So since eight months to today, I live with sickle cell. And um, I always say sickle cell has its pros and cons. So I always look to the positive instead of looking to the negative. Mm -hmm. So my life has uh, been different from all my siblings. Okay. And I thank God for my parents. They never treated me as a special child. I was just a child who, when I'm sick, I'm sick. They take care of me. When I'm normal, I play like with every other child. Right. But my playing had to be monitored. Is it? After a while, I'm being told, you need to rest, you need to drink water, you need to put on your pullover. Now it's no time for you to play, you need to rest. Because uh, when I was a kid, you know when you're a kid, you don't understand. No. They're like, I, uh, I have to drink water this particular hour. I need to wear a sweater this particular hour. Then I need to rest, I can't play anymore. So it, for me, it, it wasn't making sense. Okay. So I felt like um, my childhood was a bit robbed out of me from a while because half of my life is spent in k &H because of being admitted oh. every now and then. Then when I reached uh, in my teenage years at around 13 is when now I came to understand that I have sickle cell and uh, this is how I need to take care of myself. Right. And I thank God I had a very good pediatrician who never gave me a death sentence. Actually, when I started doing advocacy is when now I hear people saying that they were given death sentences. But like, you're not going to live for long. For long. The oldest person living in sickle cell is from Nigeria. She's, she turned 94. Isn't first, that wonderful? First of November. The oldest is in Kenya is 60 years. And we're seeing that God, with God, everything is possible. Yeah. And uh, I thank God because from there, from 2013, is when now there's more research 
towards finding a cure in sickle cell. Okay. So soon we'll eradicate sickle cell. Okay. Let's yeah. talk about, you just talked about, you know, you being around eight months old. How was life in school? Primary school, high school, past 13 years? <laughs> life in primary school was very different from life in high school. Because life in primary school, I was uh, very tiny. I looked malnourished because of the swelling of the spleen, which is one of the symptoms of sickle cell. It makes your stomach look like you're very pregnant oh. because that time the spleen has swollen because there's no enough oxygen and blood supply. So you, your body organs are not developing as your age mates. And that's why I look younger than my age mates. Majority of my age mates look very older than <laughs> I am, <laughs> being one of them. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, so... Um, you find like uh, sometimes because of getting sick a lot, uh, you don't have friends. You don't even make friends okay. because every time you make a friend, you have to explain to them, I have this condition. And because people never used to understand it, me growing up in the 80s, it was a bit hard for somebody to understand that sickle cell, you can't just touch me. It's not quite Yes. You can just touch me and get sickle cell. No, it's something you inherit from your parents. Right. And uh, with that, my mom is my number one advocate. I remember in primary school, she used to go to each and every class, l locate every child who has sickle cell, and tell the teachers, treat them A, B, C, D. Because a child with sickle cell should never go under any stress. Because those are the triggers that causes crises, like okay. stress, um, dehydration. Because okay. stress, even when you're being told you're going to have an exam now, <coughs> it's stressful. It's because stressful. It's very hard to avoid stress. Yes. In fact, we need to talk about right now, you've talked about what it is, what sickle cell is. How about we talk about the symptoms of sickle cell? The symptoms, how they produce themselves, especially when you have a young infant between the age of zero to six months, you'll notice that uh, they always have swollen uh, hands and, ah, and, and feet. So at the joints? At the joints. And then the baby is just crying. And then they, are, they look jaundiced. That time when you see a child is like that in distress, mm -hmm. rush them to hospital ask the doctor to help you do the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because once you do that, then you'll know, does your child have sickle cell? Okay. Does they, do they don't have? So okay. why, why are they having those pains? So painful joints. Painful joints. And then they're swollen. Right. Yeah. You mentioned something about dehydration. Yes. Do, they get, do you get thirsty often? It's not even being <laughs> thirsty. You just need to hydrate so that you, the sickling cells can always find a way easier to flow ah. so that they don't stick and clog at the, at the, at the joints. Yes. Then stress. Even, even when the, your mom and dad argues, you'll, find, you'll feel it as a child. And once you feel it and say, now they're arguing because I'm sick. I then remember, you get stressed. I remember most times I could see just, you can see their faces are just like, hey, we are tired of coming to hospital every time. I discharge myself enough times, like, Doc, I think I'm fine enough, I need to go home. That time you're not well. But because you're seeing, you're feeling them, you're feeling like they have to leave work, they have to come here, then the employees don't understand. Yeah. Why do you always have only one who have to leave work to go and see your child? That time you have, like, other children. Mm -hmm. But when you have the sick one, you have to take care of that sick child. Absolutely. Yeah. Eunice, let me ask you a question. Yes. What complications come about when it comes to sickle cell that you can think of? Uh, for women, there used to be this myth of women can't get children, which is a lie. But um, for men, there was this, there is a priapism, which uh, it comes at any age. It's, so it's, priapism it, is a condition? It's a condition mm -hmm. where the men are uh, erect. That means the sickling cells have gone to the, um, the penis right. and it needs to be removed from the hospital. So as a parent, when you see your young child, mm -hmm. age, age, age three or four, don't be this child, uh, mm -hmm. it's a condition. They need to be rushed to hospital so that it can be removed, so that they can be normal. It's a painful episode, and that is the time they use the strongest painkiller so that they can go back to normal. So does this mean this is the kind of erection that doesn't go away? It doesn't or? go away until it is removed from the hospital. Because all the sickling cells have gone and clogged there. Wow. Yeah. That it's must very be painful. painful. Then we have a chest, uh, a chest uh, acute chest uh, syndrome, mm -hmm. where now your chest is just clogged, you can't breathe, there's no oxygen. Then we have something we call leg ulcer, 
where now there is no blood supply on the legs, so it looks like a wound, and then it oozes sometimes, sometimes it's normal, sometimes you can't even walk. Then we have something we call AVN, which is a... AVN. AVN, which is um, a vaccillar neurocrosis, where now, the, because of not having enough oxygen in your body, your hip, joint, shoulder, or knee, because of that, the bones start eating themselves, which can also lead to arthritis. So, personally, I've done an operation on AVN on my left hip mm -hmm. because I couldn't walk for, for a very long time. It used to come, you get up in the morning, you fall down, you can't wake up. I'm sorry. And it, has, it had to go either way. It had to go. So, you're put on crutches for a while, then you're back to normal. Okay. Yeah. So, different people are affected differently, differently. by sickle cell. Yes. All of us might have sickle cell. All of us will have the same pain, but the kind of sickle cell you have will differ from the kind of sickle cell I have. Okay. Because my friend, um, how she thrives where, when it's cold, how she will never get sick. But me, when it's cold, I get crisis immediately. So I have to put myself extra warm. Mm -hmm. I have to drink extra warm, uh, extra warm water. I always have to dress extra warm. But her, that time is when she's wearing her spaghetti tops and all, all shorts. And I'm like, <laughs> she's, okay. she's in heaven. She's in heaven. So it, it, it differ from different types, but because also we have like uh, five types, five different types of sickle cell. Right. But majority in Africa, we have sickle cell uh, type A. No, we have type SS in Africa, which is the sickling cells, mm -hmm. which is the kind of genotype I have. Okay. Then there's a SC, which is the mild one, which my small bro has. You know my small bro. So yeah. him, he's a bit milder. He doesn't get more sickle cell crisis than I do. Yeah. So they're, they're like normal, but they still have pain. Yeah. All right. Let's take a short break and then we'll continue our conversation when we come back. Thank you. In our conversation today, we have Eunice Owino, who's passionate about matters sickle cell. She's living with sickle cell and she's also doing advocacy. We are going to take a short break and then when we come back, we'll continue with our conversation. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to today's episode of Today's Parent, where we are talking about sickle cell. We have Yuli Sowino in studio, and we are going to continue our conversation on managing treating uh, sickle cell and any other pointers that she can share with us. Eunice, when it comes to sickle cell, you've mentioned something to do with intense pain. Yes. As we're beginning our conversation about diagnosis, and especially, you know, just management, how do you manage the pain? Pain, you need to have the strongest painkiller. Very strong painkiller. The painkiller, when a normal person maybe take, they can chew a blackout for two hours. Wow. I mean, 24 hours, even 48. It must be a strong, strong painkiller. Pain so nothing over the counter can help you mm -mm. when you're in that state of pain. Mm -mm. And it has to be injectable, which we, they have to do an IV where it comes slowly, slowly in the blood. That's how it will ease that pain. Because once the pain has been released, then your muscles will relax. So once the muscles are relaxed, then you'll, you can now find out and do more tests okay. and find out why, why were they in pain? Why were they having this painful crisis? What, what caused the crisis? But the first thing is to manage the pain. Manage the pain. Going back to our conversation of um, diagnosis, you mentioned for the smaller children, jaundice, you know, and I don't know, even for adults, is it something that when it develops later, when you have too much you know, joint yeah. pain. How do you differentiate that from, you know, things like arthritis? It's not even arthritis. Majority of people are treated uh, malaria. They always think you have malaria. I have a friend who got diagnosed at the age of 23. Reason being, all her life, she was going in, she was being treated for malaria. Malaria na shikanga malaria sana. Eh, instead of having sickle cell. And as a sickle cell patient, you should not get malaria because when you get malaria, it's like a death sentence. Why? Because malaria, if you have ever gotten malaria, you know how malaria takes, uh, can kill even your body. So you can imagine battling malaria and battling sickle cell. It's, it's just, it will overwhelm It's too much body. on the body. Yes. It's too much on the body. It's too much on the body. So 
that's why I always tell people, also you as a person, as an individual, you need to know what works for you. That's why I'm doing advocacy, to mm -hmm. train even the young one. Fine, I've been told to take medication. Because personally, as I was growing up, I remember sometimes I never used to take my drugs. Sometimes I became so immune to drugs, like right now if you give me something like brufen, I can't take it. It will not work. You need something stronger. I need something stronger. So that's why I'm saying over the years, because, yeah, they didn't know better. But I was always put on pauldrin, uh, folic acid, fru uh, uh, paracetamol, which used to be brufen then. So actually, pauldrin is something you need to take when you're living in malaria-prone areas like uh, Kisumu. Yeah. Or you're in... Western Kenya, that's yes, right. Where Coastal these are, area? Yeah. Where there's a lot of malaria, then that is the time you need to be always on board train. Like when I need to travel down to Kisumu or Nyanza or, or coast, I need to do podrin two weeks before I travel. Right. So it's, it's an anti-malaria kind of drug that fights. Okay. So you need to know your drugs. You need to have, um, I always call it, it's not being proud, but have a personal doctor who you work with. Who knows your journey. Who knows your journey who understand and knows which drug works better for you. Always make sure you do clinical checkups. Every three months, go at least once. So that the doctor tells you you're good, your HB is going up or it's going down, mm -hmm. or your, your infections, this is how it is. HB is, is a hemoglobin. It's a hemoglobin. So you need to always check your hemoglobin. Are you gaining more hemoglobin or you're losing blood? Okay. Because okay. sometimes you end up losing blood without realizing then when all of a sudden you, fight, you start feeling fatigue, you start feeling headache, and then when they check your hemoglobin, they find you at two. That is very risky. Okay. That time you're a, a, a case of emergency that you need to be transfused immediately. You need to be rushed into even ICU, HDU, whatever. Let me ask you something. As we are talking about managing you know, the pain and management options, treatment... Is there any case of anybody who's ever been cured of sickle cell around the world? In the world, they say they have, but personally, I've not seen. Because uh, in my years of advocacy, I've met parents who have even gone to India, Dan Bamaro, for their kids. And fortunately, when the kids come back, they yeah. say the immune system starts behaving like a, a, an infant. So they are trying now to learn how to manage themselves, how even to eat, how even to check the diet and all that. But unfortunately, they don't live long mm. to, to testify after the, the transplant. Majority have passed on. So uh, from 2013, the way I said, is when now the research has really kicked off. Now we have gene therapy, we have stem cell therapy, we have bone marrow transplant. It's, very, it's still very expensive to do them. But uh, we are yet to find a cure, cure. Okay. So for now, the cure we can do is just stop marriages. People not know your status. Just know your sickle cell status. That way, when you find, if we can't even stop marriage, then we can say we can stop you from getting children. You know, that would be very strange that you then meet somebody and you go on a date and then you ask them, okay, and your name is? My name is Peter. <laughs> Do you have a history of sickle cell in your family, or do you have gene? Genotype A. Are, are you genotype? And is, uh, of course, you will go. Yes. What? Yeah. <laughs> but in Nigeria, that is what they do. Honestly, because for them, doing the genotype test is free. It's like doing a HIV test. In Kenya, the only church that tried to do a genotype genetic uh, counseling mm -hmm. is SDA. But that is counseling. It's not really forcing on you. But you know, when you know your genotype, then you'll you'll place a, an informed decision okay. when you're getting married. Fine, I have sickle cell. Fine, I want to get married to a person Let's see who, how we can manage it. who also has sickle cell or maybe a person who is a carrier. So then that means I'll make inf information that I'll decide like, now I'll not have kids. We'll adapt. Okay. That, that also works. Or you'll say, we'll have kids, let them have sickle cell, we'll manage from there. All right. Yeah, but why will you want to go through the same hassle and bustle that you went as a person. Information is power. Yes. Let's talk about, before we run out of time, your advocacy, the work you do when it comes to advocacy. Tell us about that. Advocacy for me is to tell people that sickle cell is not a death sentence. 
uh, over the years, over the world, people who have sickle cell are doing amazing things. And uh, you'll see the photos, they'll show you. There are people who are in different professions. We have doctors. We have our own uh, Dr. Maria Jambo, who was Miss USA Africa. And she runs all, her own organization. She has sickle cell. She doesn't care. She went, became the beauty pageant. We have uh, people like Ruth who are into business. Right now she's not in Kenya. She got married. She lives uh, in the Norway with her husband. But she's enjoying life. So it's not a death sentence. It's not. We it's have not people who sentence. are into IT. We have people who are doing advocacy like myself. We have other people who are doing uh, the basketballer from yes. the States. He's playing basketball. Something that we were told, you can't do this because you can't, you can't exercise, run. you can't participate in Which sports. Which is a lie. Actually, I came to realize that other people, when they do extreme sports, is when they don't get crises. Others, when you do extreme sports, like me, when I enter into a swimming pool, that's, that's, that's calling for crisis. <laughs> so the, me and cold water, we okay. don't agree. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it, people are doing amazing things out here. But if your parents decided that they'll keep you in that corner and because the doctor said you will die, it's a lie. Speaking of parents who are then caregivers, most of them, yes. what tip can you share with a parent who's watching right now on how to cope? with a child, you know, just as a family to cope with the condition? As a family, the first thing you need to give that child is love. Show them you care. Don't mistreat them because you don't know where God wants them to be tomorrow. Then care, just teach them how to care for themselves because they take care of themselves better than yourself. Sometimes I have arguments with doctors because I know what works for my body. I'll go in when I have crisis. Even if I'm having, it doesn't matter what kind of pain, I'll ask you, what are you putting on me? Which drug are you giving me? If I'm allergic to that drug, I'll tell you no. Mm -hmm. And there is where now we always brush, brush shoulders a lot with the doctors, yeah. with health uh, practitioners, because for them, they think this is what is right. This is what I need to give you. And then you go like, no, that doesn't work for me. This works for me. If I need this pain to go, I need A, B, C, D. So... Also, just teaching the children what works for them. Right. What time, why do you need to take these drugs? Because also the drugs are so expensive. Not every single family can afford them. You can imagine you have a, here you have a family of five people. All of them have sickle cell. Is it the and drugs you have a case you, like that. Yes. Is it the drug that you buy or is it the food you buy for that family? That must be tough. Yes. That must so be that's why tough. we're appealing for people to come in, support us. Because this year I'm doing a project of, um, I'm doing water bottles for the kids. Because Ushago, Ushago, Kondani, these guys get dehydrated because they don't drink water, because they don't have a water bottle just to carry a water. You have like 10 and you throw them. Yeah. That water bottle, it will save a life. Because they need to be hydrated, that's it. Start with hydration as we continue with diet as we continue with other things. What has that uh, got to do with it, by the way? That will help because when you eat foods that help you regenerate a lot of blood, then you will also avoid being transfused in hospital. Is spinach one of them? Yes. So it's a true thing? It is. Spinach, um, pumpkin leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking for the word in your mother tongue? <laughs> pumpkin leaves? Mm -hmm. Pumpkin leaves. <laughs> Beans. And, uh, oh, beans help. Yeah. Okay. Liver, then lemon water. Yeah. Okay. Lemon water because w when you take that lemon water, it thinners the blood, mm -hmm. so it makes the blood just flow. So you get very little sickling cells in right. your body. Yeah. What's the average cost of uh, treatment units? <sighs> the average cost. So the average. Somebody has an attack. Average cost. I thank God for other people who their advocacy is towards opening clinics. So right now we have like uh, two clinics for sickle cell, which are every Tuesday, which you charge 300 bob. Where? In uh, Greenhouse Oasis. Then uh, Baraka. Yeah. Okay. Then Baraka is in Madari, where you'll be charged only 300 bob. And you, you'll see a doctor, you'll do a urinalysis test, a blood test. Then also you'll do, uh, you, yeah, consultation with the doctor every Tuesday. Then um, drug you buy. 
if you're put on hydroxyurea, that means you have to take um, three or two, depending with what your doctor will give you per day. And this is uh, something you'll take for your lifetime. Then there's folic. So an average cost will be like between 2,000 to 3,000. Per month. Per month, per patient. But uh, in Homer Bay, we have, um, we have AMPA, who are helping people to, you register with them at a cost of 200, and then you get your drugs and pre-checkup. Okay. Yes. Support, the kind of support that your advocacy works provides. Do you have WhatsApp groups? Do you have physical meetings to meet every so often? How does it work? Uh, I do support groups every month where we meet, come, talk, I also empower the adult warriors because what, okay, we call them sickle cell warriors nowadays. We stop calling them sicklers. Uh, we do support groups. So I've partnered with, we partnered with Google last year, came train the adult warriors because what happened is because doctors didn't know what to do with these adult warriors because majority were dying at the age of 18. So now when you're 20, 30, 40, 50, they wonder where do they put you? Okay. I don't lie to you. Till today, I consult a lot with my pediatrician. I don't know how to... Yes, I'm supposed to transit, to go to uh, transition, to go to and see a physician, which is becoming a bit difficult because a physician, they don't give you that kind of you love. You feel it's more general compared with a pediatrician. <laughs> you know, a pediatrician, they have that kind of babiness. <laughs> now. Yeah. I hear you, I yeah. hear you. But uh, a physician, they're always very serious, like uh, majority of professors, so they'll come and see so where are you sick? I don't like that. It's very formal. I like us to have a conversation. Okay. This is my health. So I'm not coming in for counseling. Okay. I'm feeling A, B, C, D. What could be wrong? You as the doctor, you tell me this and this is wrong because you have not done A, B, C, D. Okay. So that is what we like to hear. So All right. My parting shot? No, even before we get to the parting <laughs> shot. You mentioned you, uh, you meet once a month? Yes. Once a, month. Once a month. So as your parting shot, you can then share with our viewers how they can connect with you. How can they reach you, Eunice so we know? Uh, it's simple. My parting shot is sickle cell is not a death sentence. Love yourself. Love life. Get us on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Sickle Cell Uhuru Trust. You'll find us there. You'll see the activities we always do. Because I'm always... I'm always reaching out to people. I also do hospital visit where we meet new people to come in and join. We have WhatsApp group, so come in, share your contacts. We'll be able to contact you as soon as possible. All right, and the name of the group again is? The page on Facebook? Sickle Cell Uhuru Trust. Sickle Cell Uhuru Trust. Yes. Thank you so much for coming to share your news. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And all the best. Asante sana. We come to the end of our conversation today. We had Eunice Owino sharing her insights when it comes to matter sickle cell, living with the disease, giving you encouragement, especially if you're watching and you're afflicted in any way. If you know a friend, a relative, a colleague who has sickle cell and you feel they need some extra support, please connect them to Eunice's platform so they can be part of a family where they are understood and they're loved and they feel that they're not alone. As Eunice has said, it is not a death sentence. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I have been your host, Christine Casina. This has been today's parent. We've been here in studio at Little Cribs, the home of fun, exciting, durable kids' furniture. So if you're looking for kids' furniture, make sure you come over at Little Cribs. If you're looking for parenting information, www.supermamas.co.ke is your resource center. We thank you for your time and look forward to having you next time. Goodbye.